And the next item of business is a member's business debate on motion 7369 in the name of Stuart McMillan on National Eye Health Week 2017 and the threat to vision posed by diabetic retinopathy. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put and I would ask those who wish to contribute to press the request to speak buttons now. And I call on Stuart McMillan to open the debate around seven minutes, please, Mr McMillan. Thank you very much, uh, presiding officer. First of all, I'd like to thank members for signing uh, the motion and uh, for those who are going to take part this afternoon. And uh, I'm aware that uh, there are some members of uh, RNAB Scotland uh, to be in the chamber this afternoon in the gallery. But, uh, presiding officer, I want to thank you certainly for, uh, for chairing, uh, for presenting over this particular debate this afternoon. And as a convener of the Cross Party Group on Visual Impairment, uh, I welcome the opportunity that National Eye Health Week provides to remind members in the Chamber and people across Scotland of the importance of looking after your eye health. Since 2006, everyone in Scotland has been entitled to a free eye health check every two years, as well as picking up on the treatable eye conditions such as diabetic retinopathy and cataracts. They can also spot the early signs of heart disease and also brain tumours. Free eye checks are therefore an opportunity that's actually too good to miss. They can and have prevented sight loss in Scots uh, with quick treatment of eye conditions picked up by these tests, slowing sight deterioration and also sometimes preventing it altogether. This is particularly important for diabetics. Diabetics are entitled to a free yearly eye, eye check which can pick up the early signs of diabetic retinopathy, the leading cause of sight loss in working age adults in Scotland. It's caused by consistently high blood sugar levels damaging blood vessels in the back of the eyes. And by the time this damage has affected a, di a diabetic's vision, the retinopathy is already in an advanced stage. Now, eye health checks are vital to picking up on the early signs of retinopathy so that it can be treated before it becomes so advanced that it actually affects the vision. Now, these free yearly eye checks can be both sight-saving and also sight-preserving for the 291,000 people in Scotland living with diabetes. This is one of the reasons why I'm glad that this motion was chosen for debate today. And it's important to raise awareness of these free eye health checks amongst both the general population and also the diabetic community. And I hope that this debate will actually go some way towards doing this. I would like to commend the work of Diabetes Scotland and also RNIB Scotland, whose joint campaign uh, video work uh, this week highlights the, the effects that diabetic retinopathy can have on a person's vision and more importantly promote these free, these free eye health checks. 42,000 diabetics missed their eye screening in the last 15 months, missing out on the vital opportunity to check that their eyes are healthy and that they don't need vision saving treatment. And I hope that this video also encourages more people to attend their annual eye screening and get their eye health check actually undertaken. Now, I'd recommend that members in the chamber actually check this video out for themselves to get an idea of what it would be like if their vision was actually impaired. I know that the government is also committed to raising awareness of the importance of eye health checks and has set a self-imposed target of running localised campaigns, particularly amongst communities where take-up is the lowest, to ensure that everyone from my constituency in Green and Inverclyde to the Grampians know of their entitlement and are in a position to actually take advantage of it. The, the Community Eye Care Review uh, that was commissioned by, by the, the Cabinet Secretary for Health last year has produced great work in evaluating community eye care uh, services across Scotland and also providing a list of recommendations for the government that would actually raise the quality of eye care to an even higher standard and also take eye care to everyone in Scotland. The cross-party group in visual impairment it was, uh, was pleased to hear that from representatives of the review who explained their findings and also recommendation, recommendations that uh, we'd be keen to hear about, uh, about further updates on this from the government. Uh, also, I would appreciate if the Cabinet Secretary could provide the Chamber with an update on the progress uh, of the objective to promote the importance of eye health checks so far, as cited in the Community Eye Care Review uh, recommendations, and also to update us on what plans the government has to continue pursuing this objective over year two uh, of this uh, parliamentary session. Since eye, eye checks were made free in 2006, there has been a 29% rise in uptake of eye health checks. Now, this is a great achievement, but there is still scope to do more, and uptake is still low. 
in the worst off communities in Scotland and also in ethnic communities where sight loss is genetically more prevalent. One in ten people from the BME communities over the age of 65 will experience serious sight loss. People from black and, and Asian ethnic groups have a higher risk of developing eye conditions such as diabetic retinopathy and also glaucoma uh, due to the causes of these conditions being genetically more prevalent and are more often likely to go blind after diagnosis. It's particularly important for higher risk groups uh, to then take advantage of the free eye health checks. But recent studies such as, such as the improving access to optometry services for people at risk of preventable sight loss conducted in 2014 have shown that these groups are actually less likely to get their eyes checked. Now, we need to find out why this is the case and address the causes. Now, this government has the responsibility to put a focus on raising awareness of free eye health checks amongst these groups, and there is precedent for this. In 2015, also the Welsh Government actually made eye health checks free for people from BME communities, recognising the need uh, to particularly raise awareness amongst these groups. Now, in Scotland, of course, we have universal free eye health check. However, the issue still remains that these groups are less likely to take up their entitlement and need special government attention. And as a country, uh, we must do more to support hard-to-reach communities and communities from a diverse background. Uh, we cannot rest on our laurels, uh, but we must also focus on ensuring avoidable sight loss is prevented. There are some good examples of working with diverse communities. For instance, our NAB's Scotland Diversity and Sight Team does important work in this area. Uh, indeed, uh, they are attending the Muslim Council of Scotland's meeting this Saturday, specifically talking to people from BME communities about the higher risk that they have of developing eye conditions and the importance of taking up eye, uh, the, the eye check. I would also encourage the government to target campaigns to these hard to reach groups as recommended by the, the Community Eye Care Review and also to monitor the results of these campaigns to ensure there is continuous improvement. Sight is the sense that people fear most uh, if they were to lose. As a government, uh, we can aid the prevention uh, of sight loss and uh, certainly must aid the prevention of sight loss. Raising awareness of free eye health checks generally goes some way to helping prevent sight loss, but we must also ensure that groups such as diabetics and people from the BMA communities that are a particularly high risk of developing eye conditions are given special focus by the government in this area. I look forward to the Cabinet Secretary's update on the progress uh, that has been made on the recommendations put forward by the Community Eye Care Review, specifically relating to the localised campaign, campaigns and also what plans are in place to build on this progress. But, presiding officer, I certainly hope that this debate helps raise awareness of the importance of actually getting eyes checked and also within the general population, but more specifically in the diabetic community, and also look forward to hearing fellow members' contributions in the Chamber this afternoon. Thank you very much. We move to the open debate and speeches of around four minutes, please. Miles Briggs to be followed by David Stewart. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And I'd like to start by congratulating Stuart McMillan on securing to today's important debate during this year's National Eye Health Week and acknowledge the good work that he's been doing over many years in raising eye health issues in this Parliament. I also thank the organisations who've provided briefings ahead of today's debate. And I'd like to commend Diabetes, UK, uh, Diabetes Scotland and RNIB Scotland for the joint action they are taking to raise awareness of diabetic retinopathy. Last night, I caught one of the adverts on Channel 4 around this campaign. I think it was incredibly hard-hitting to see, actually, the impact of different versions of sight loss. And I think campaigns like that really do, um, for those of us who have not experienced sight loss, present an opportunity to see um, just the impact it has on people's lives. And it's right that there is a real focus on what is the most common cause of vi vision loss amongst people with diabetes and the leading cause of visual impairment and blindness amongst all working-age adults. With more than 290,000 Scots currently living with diabetes, and with that number predicted to continue to grow in the years ahead, we will all agree that tackling diabetic retinopathy and reducing its impact must be a key health priority, as well as, of course, addressing factors like diet, obesity, and physical activity levels, which are linked to the increasing prevalence of type 2 diabetes in Scotland. Stuart McMillan has already identified diabetic retinopathy uh, early diagnosis can lead to treatment that can prevent or reduce sight loss. So encouraging every person from 12 who has diabetes to, to either kind of take up an annual screening appointment is, I think, very vital um, to uh, help address this. The condition often has no symptoms until it's well advanced, so the importance of annual screening cannot be actually overstated. 
And I think, I think it's hugely con concerning, has already been raised, that 42,000 people with diabetes in Scotland do not have a record of attending a retinopathy screening appointment over the last 15 months. Clearly more action is needed to increase screening uptake rates. And I'd urge friends and family members of people with diabetes to encourage them to attend the screening and to help remind them of the importance of this annual check. We should also continue to get the message across that the screening for diabetic retinopathy is different to the eye test, something which, um, opt which you'd get from an optician's. And I welcome some of the work which has already been taking place on this to look at innovative ways that the Scottish Government can improve up screen uptake in screening and actually look at certain communities and the, the information which is already provided and how that can be advanced. In addition, we must emphasise that anyone with diabetes who believes that they aren't being invited to attend screening, who believes that they have missed an invitation in a particularly year, should not hesitate to speak to their GP or local diabetes healthcare team about this. I welcome the powerful online and cinema commercials which have been based on the message, How Do You See Scotland?, which is being shown at the moment. I'd like to commend Brian Cox both for his support of this ad and for publicly talking about his own experiences of diabetes, which I think is incredibly important. And I know members of this parliament have done that, and I think that's something which can only help in trying to address some of the issues. This has generated um, significant media coverage in recent days and I hope that this, this campaign will help raise awareness of this important issue. To conclude, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer, I again welcome much, um, I very much welcome this debate in National Eye Health Week 2017 and pleased to join Stuart McMillan and other members in welcoming the combined work of Diabetes Scotland and RIB, RNIB Scotland. I wish the campaign every success and hope that we can see an increase in the number of people with di diabetes taking part in the screening programme each year and a corresponding reduction above all in the preventable sight loss and visual impairment caused by diabetic retinopathy, something we can which can have such a devastating impact on someone's life and well-being. David Stewart followed by Emma Harper. Uh, thank you, President Officer, and could I also congratulate Stuart Macmillan on securing the debate this afternoon. And as co-convener of the cross-party group on diabetes, let me tell you about the hidden epidemic in Scotland. 291,000 people in Scotland are diagnosed with diabetes. 49,000 people have the condition but are undiagnosed. And 620,000 people in Scotland are at high risk of developing type 2 diabetes. That means, presiding officer, that nearly a million people in Scotland who are directly affected by diabetes through having it are at risk of developing it. That means scores of parliamentary staff today have diabetes without knowing it. Perhaps an MSP or two, a dozen MSP assistants, and a clutch of those in the gallery today. So it's a true Scottish epidemic. Diabetes is the main cause of blindness for those of working age. And that's why I congratulate Diabetes Scotland and RNIB Scotland on their campaign marking National Eye Health Week 2017, a campaign which, as we've heard, highlights the threat to vision posed by diabetic retinopathy. And while I'm on my feet, President Officer, could I congratulate Jane Claire Judson, who's the Chief Executive of Diabetes Scotland, on the work she carries out as she's leaving Diabetes Scotland in the next few weeks to a new post. So diabetes is a true Scottish epidemic. Two and a half times more people have diabetes than all cancers combined. It's a true Scottish epidemic of health inequality where children in areas of deprivation are more at risk of obesity, a severe risk factor for type two diabetes. So what is diabetic retinopathy and why is it so important? Well, as we've heard, 42,000 people with diabetes have no record of attending a screening in the last 15 months. And it's part of essential diabetes care. And everyone over 12 who is living with diabetes should attend annual retinopathy screening. And as we've heard, that's not the same as normal eye examinations at opticians. So regular screening is vital to pick up early signs. And we've heard, and I agree with the points made, that diabetic retinopathy often has no symptoms until it's well advanced. So the 42,000 Scots with diabetes who have no record of recent screening are putting their sight at risk. <coughs> now, the How Do You See Scotland campaign will help raise awareness of the issue and will hopefully encourage more people to attend their screening appointments. 
That presiding officer, as with many aspects of health delivery in Scotland, there is a postcode lottery. Non-attendance at retinopathy screening is only 8% in Defries and Galloway, but nearly 20% in my patch in Highland Health Board area, and nearly 21% in Lanarkshire and Greater Glasgow and, and Clyde. In my view, diabetes is a ticking time bomb, and it's the fastest growing health crisis of our time. More people have this serious health condition uh, of diabetes, more than that dementia and cancer combined. As the Health Cabinet Secretary will know, NHS Scotland spends over a billion pounds annually on diabetes, but by providing the knowledge, the skills and the tools to support people to live well with their diabetes, we can reduce diabetic complications. This will improve the quality of life for people living with the disease. It will lead to long-term cost savings with fewer people requiring treatment to admissions to hospital and surgery. And everyone, irrespective of where they live in Scotland, has the right to this treatment. Uh, briefly, presiding officer, because time is short, a few years ago, uh, I was proud to address the first ever uh, Global Diabetes Forum of Parliamentary Champions for Diabetes in Melbourne. It was an unusual audience with nearly 100 national champions from far afield as Russia, Nigeria and Canada. Now, we signed the Melbourne Declaration, which committed parliaments across the globe to ensure the political agenda has a higher emphasis on preventative work, early diagnosis and access to adequate care. And I said in my speech in Melbourne that I was proud to come from a nation with a strong track record in innovation and discovery. Scots like Fleming, Watt and Bell led the way in discovery and international collaboration is the way forward. And finally, presiding officer, uh, members will be aware that it was in 1922 that Professor John McLeod from Aberdeen, working with two outstanding scientists, Bunting and Best, discovered insulin. Before that date, type 1 uh, diabetes was a death sentence uh, in Scotland. So in conclusion, we have a great opportunity to raise the bar in healthcare. I congratulate again Stuart Macmillan on his timely motion, allowing us to focus on the threats posed by diabetic retinopathy and to raise the importance of having regular eye screening across every health board in Scotland. Thank you. Emma Harper, followed by Alexander Burnett. Thank you, presiding officer. First, I would like to remind members that I am a registered nurse and I am a co-convener of the Diabetes Cross Party Group here in Holyrood. I'd like to congratulate my colleague Stuart Macmillan, MSP, for securing this debate as part of National Eye Health Week. Diabetes UK funded a programme in 1986 to take retinal photography screening out to people with diabetes. And the Scottish Diabetic Retinopathy Screening Programme was started in 2003, collecting together what had been carried out before. According to the latest statistics from Scottish Diabetes Survey, there are almost 260,000 people with type 2 diabetes living in Scotland today. And everyone under the age of 12 with type 1 or type 2 diabetes should be screened, but around 42,076 are not screened, were not screened last year. Screening takes less than 10 minutes and it's required annually. This is great news. My sister, Marina Forbes, is a clinical ophthalmic nurse specialist and she informs me that people with diabetes who take up the offer of screening now have the same potential of maintaining the same eye health as those without diabetes. And 30% of her clinic visits are made by those folks with diabetes. Many may have had diabetes for 10 years prior to even a diagnosis of their diabetes or their type two. The goal of the screening programme is to recognise problems and use the data from subsequent retinal photographs to track whether there is a de de deterioration in the vascular structures and the macula. Early detection leads to early treatment and promotes visual health and keeps folk independent and able to remain in their homes longer. Diabetic retinopathy is the leading cause of preventable sight loss in working age adults across Scotland and there are various types. Background retinopathy is the earliest visible change to the retina where the tiny wee blood vessels become blocked and are at risk of microaneurysm or haemorrhage. Vasc um, maculopathy occurs in the most important area of the retina, the macula, which provides our central detailed vision. And pr proliferative, try and get these words out, retinopathy occurs when retinal hypoxia, which is low oxygen supply, allows new immature blood vessels to develop. And these immature 
blood vessels, they leak fluid and that damages the vision. There are various treatments available depending on the severity of the condition. Laser treatment or photocoagulation was commonly used prior to the advent of the injection of antivascular endothelial growth factor injections into the vitreous of the eye. The antivascular endothelial growth factor or anti-VEGF halt the production of extra protein and in turn the growth of new blood vessels. Laser treatment revolutionised retinopathy treatment in the past as it was the only effective treatment. But the anti-VEGF treatment has superseded that and is a great method of treatment. Together with effective screening and good blood glucose control and good, good blood pressure control as well, it can successfully maintain vision. Good news for NHS in Fries and Galloway is that numerous the, the actual numbers attending screening are really high and thank you to my colleague uh, Dave Stewart for mentioning that. Presiding officer, my message is that what's happening within your eyes, which can be overtly symptomatic, could also be happening to the tiny wee vessels of your feet, your heart and your kidneys. And the microvascular damage can alert health professionals and direct further action so that the other vessels and organs can be monitored and protected as well. So once again, I would like to congratulate Stuart McMillan on securing this debate today and also congratulate Diabetes Scotland and the RNIB for their campaign to mark National Eye Health Week. It is important that everyone recognises the benefits of attending regular eye screening services that are available to them because it can save your vision. I am one of those type 1 diabetes diabetics at risk and I actually had my retina photographed a couple of weeks ago as part of my eye screening programme. So I'd like to just say that my eyes, my retina, they're doing fine. So thank you, presiding officer. I think the official report will appreciate your speech with the spellings in it, Ms Harper. <laughs> and can I call Alexander Burnett followed by Colin Smith? Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer, and can I join my fellow members in congratulating Stuart Macmillan on bringing this important debate on National Eye Health Week to the Chamber today. And I'd also like to join my fellow members in commending Diabetes UK and RNIB Scotland for joining forces in their How Do You See Scotland campaign to raise awareness of a diabetic retinopathy and the importance of screening. It is great to see these two great charities combined to tackle this condition caused by complications of diabetes typically through high blood sugar levels damaging the back of the eye. But to constituents across Scotland watching our debate today, they might have some questions. Questions I trust having read the briefings, I'm now better equipped to answer. So I'd like to use this opportunity to rhetorically answer three questions so that they too can be better informed. Am I at risk? Now, NHS Scotland advises that any, everyone with diabetes who is 12 years old or over goes for eye screening once a year. The How Do You See Scotland campaign has found that 15% of those eligible for this screening have not been attending in the previous 15 months. If you are one of these people, I would urge you to get yourself an appointment so that you have the opportunity to tackle this condition early. How can I reduce my risk of diabetic retinopathy? Firstly, attend your screening appointments. These are different to your eye test at the opticians as they are specifically taking pictures at the back of your eye to assess if there is any damage to the blood vessels. Again, NHS Scotland advises you to control your blood sugar, pressure and cholesterol levels and take your diabetes medication as prescribed. I am sure that the majority of those with diabetes will be all too aware of the importance of this, but we must raise awareness to remind those at risk. Can diabetic retinopathy be treated? Sadly, there is no cure for diabetic retinopathy. However, there are treatment options. There are three different stages, background, maculopathy, and proliferative retinopathy. All three have different options, ranging from regular monitoring of blood vessels to laser treatment. And we are told that at all stages, managing your diabetes is crucial. Having control of your diabetes can prevent conditions such as these from developing at all. But in the more advanced stages of affected vision, 
taking control can stop the condition getting worse. Now, I am already aware of the great work RNIB already do for people across Scotland. One of my former members of staff has benefited from, benefited from their work and earlier this year ran the London Marathon to raise funds for them. But I'd also like to note my personal thanks to both RNIB and Diabetes UK for the constant support they provide to patients, families, communities and elected officials in informing us of these important health issues which can affect us in so many ways. Thank you. The last open debate contribution is from Colin Smith. Thank, thank you, President Officer. Can I begin by echoing the comments of others and, and thanking Stuart, a fellow member of the cross-party group on visual impairment, uh, for lodging his motion and providing members with the opportunity to congratulate and thank Diabetes Scotland and RNIB for their campaign to, na to mark National Eye Health Week by highlighting the threat to vision posed by diabetic retinopathy. Some members will have seen that the excellent campaign film Diabetes Scotland at, at RNIB uh, have shown in in cinemas and online. It's a powerful film, but it hits home the importance of getting your eyes checked to avoid where possible sight loss. Because as World Health Assembly figures show, sight loss is avoidable in 50% of cases, in particular <coughs> if sight problems are detected at an early stage. Now, we cannot underestimate the massive impact loss of vision has on a person's life. It can drastically affect their confidence, their self-esteem and their mental health. With, we therefore all have a role to play in doing what we can to promote early detection of sight problems. It's more than a decade since the introduction of free health checks by my Labour colleague, Lewis MacDonald, who was a responsible minister at the time. This move brought about a step change in the eye health care pathway in Scotland, and since then, the number of eye examinations has increased significantly. But we can't be complacent. We know that the number of people with sight loss is set to double by 2030. That's why, like Stuart McMillan, I very much welcome the findings of the Community Eye Care Review. The review sets out important recommendations on how best to achieve a higher uptake of eye health checks, and it highlights how to do more with less by providing a quality service to all areas of Scotland, including the creation of a national list of optometrists and dispensing opticians to improve service planning and reduce duplication, and making some eye services, which are usually provided in hospitals, like follow-up cataract surgery appointments, available more locally. But as we've heard today in the debate, and as highlighted by Diabetes Scotland and RNIB's campaign, one of the factors contributing to the rise in sight loss is the increase in the number of people diagnosed with diabetes in Scotland. As members know, a key part of controlling diabetes is monitoring blood sugar levels, as this guides what a person eats and often how much insulin they take. At the moment, people with type 1 diabetes typically self-monitor their blood glucose level by using a finger prick, often around a dozen times a day and indeed often during the night. Now, as I found out when I attended the recent visit to Kirkubri by members of the petitions committee, including Angus MacDonald, who was in the chamber earlier, stabbing your finger with a needle is not exactly a pleasant experience, and I only had to do it once on that particular visit. Yet children often as young as three have to do that a dozen or more times a day, every day. During the visit, I had the pleasure of meeting local mums, Sinead Anderson and Emily Ross, whose daughters, Maisie and Robin, have type 1 diabetes. They highlighted the alternative to the painful and distressing process of finger pricking, namely continuous glucose monitoring, where a small sensor is placed under the skin to check <coughs> glucose levels. It allows more frequent readings of glucose levels, allowing the fine-tuning of glucose levels uh, and treatment, and reduces the need for painful finger pricking. However, it's not currently available on prescription, so I therefore urge the government to seriously consider the case being made by mums like Sinead and Emily, and more importantly their daughters Maisie and Robin, and the many others across Scotland, and make this monitoring available on prescription. The government has a duty to support the best possible care for those with diabetes, and to raise awareness of the risk consistently high blood sugar poses to their vision, including the importance of attending their annual eye checks. This fits perfectly with the Scottish Government's 2020 vision strategy, which puts an emphasis on prevention and anticipation in health and social care. But in order to anticipate which areas are likely to have a bigger increase in sight loss, we need to know how many people have sight loss currently and the rate at which sight loss is rising. I'd therefore like to ask the Cabinet Secretary if she can tell us when figures for the number of blind and partially sighted people registered per local authority will be published. In the past, these figures were reported annually, and a return to this report would be invaluable. 
Presiding officer, in concluding, can I once again congratulate Stuart McMillan on his motion, and I hope today's debate will result in an increased focus on how we can best promote the prevention of sight loss, including improved management of diabetes, and by carrying out the recommendations set out in the Community Eye Care Review. Thank you. I call Shona Robson to respond to this debate. Around seven minutes, please, Cabinet Secretary. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I want to also uh, congratulate Stuart McMillan on securing this important debate and also join with uh, Miles Briggs in paying tribute to Brian Cox and his support for the How Do You See Scotland campaign. I think it's a, a very powerful campaign indeed. I also uh, welcome Diabetes Scotland and the RNIB's uh, campaign to raise awareness of uh, diabetes retinopathy and encourage attendance of screening appointments as a number of members have. Uh, this is an important initiative during Eye Health Week and campaigns such as this one are crucial for highlighting the ongoing importance of attending regular eye screening appointments as well as uh, all other uh, diabetes health uh, checks. Uh, regrettably, diabetic retinopathy remains the leading cause of preventable sight loss among people of working age in Scotland. Uh, the posters in the film of this campaign are clearly showing how damaging and devastating retinopathy is. Far too many people only ha have an eye test when they experience a problem with their eyes or their vision, which may be too late. This is a, a tragic and avoidable fact when one considers that current screening techniques are capable of detecting re referable retinopathy at a stage where, with proper treatment, the probability of preserving vision is high. At the end of 2016, in Scotland, we had uh, 291,981 people diagnosed with diabetes of all types. This represents 5.4% of the population. We know that on top of the life-changing effect of diabetes, indirect costs associated with poor management are very high. Diabetes is an important issue to tackle at any time, but when we have such financial pressures on the NHS, it becomes even more pressing to ensure that we're doing everything we can to address avoidable complications of diabetes, which is why the Scottish Government considers driving continuous improvement in retinopathy screening practice to be an important priority. Scotland has a, a world-renowned uh, diabetes retinopathy screening programme and I'd like to thank the DRS Collaborative which oversees the performance of the programme. 84.1% of people eligible had their eyes screened by the Diabetic Retinopathy Screening Service in the previous uh, 15 months. Uh, uh, 220,893 uh, people had their eyes screened in 2016, more than ever before, but we must not be complacent and we'd seek to have even more eligible uh, patients being screened for early signs of diabetes retinopathy. Uh, yes, of course. David Stewart. I, I thank the Cabinet Secretary for giving way. Would the Cabinet Secretary have a look at the issues around the postcode lottery in screening? The points that I made earlier about Dumfries and Galloway only uh, being 8%, but Highland 22% of people uh, are not uh, turning up for retinopathy. There is a real issue across the health boards on this issue. Yes. Uh, Robson. yes, I will do that. I was going to come on to that. I will do that. And the, the other issue that, uh, that David Stewart mentioned, of course, was the health inequalities dimension to that. And uh, there is uh, the Scottish Diabetes Group, which oversees, coordinates and reviews the implementation of the improvement plan, is working to establish an inequality group to, in order to deliver the priority on equality of access. Very happy to keep the member um, informed about that, but it is about driving improvement and dealing with some of those issues around uh, um, the, the difference in attendance, uh, particularly where there's a health inequalities dimension. So happy to keep you informed uh, about that. NHS Scotland have recently invested in a, a replacement IT system for the screening programme, which was successfully implemented across Scotland earlier this year. And this system is now being used across all health boards to screen on average 1,000 people uh, with diabetes per working day. And that system maintains and supports our commitment to people with diabetes, providing the best possible care now and for the years ahead. Uh, members may be aware the standards, uh, the DRS standards were revised in 2016 by Health Improvement Scotland to support staff and ensure the highest standards of screening are achieved. And each standard also details what people, patients and their representatives and the public can expect of these services. And uh, two of the, the new standards relate to protocols for referral uh, and treatment. And of course, ophthalmologists play a, a crucial part in the pathway of delivering high quality eye care for the people or for people with diabetes. And in the spring, I welcomed the publication of the National Ophthalmology Workstream uh, 
which demonstrates the benefits of close working between local clinicians, managers and the Scottish Government. Uh, the report identifies solutions to improve the flow of patients through hospital ophthalmology services. And that's going to be done by uh, adopting new methods of working using modern technology and making use of the entire workforce, such as upskilling the non-medical workforce, such as nurses to deliver the anti-VEGF uh, injections and optometrists to review lower risk patients to ensure all patients get the timely hospital eye care that they need. Going back to the main theme of the, the motion, retinopathy screening, screening is one of the nine healthcare checks that people with diabetes should have. And only a few months ago, we ran a poster campaign in community pharmacies to encourage people to make sure they get all of their healthcare checks to better manage their condition and to help them live a longer, healthier life. Uh, we also need to ensure that people living with diabetes have the tools and skills to manage their diabetes well, to prevent and reduce the risk of developing complications, which of course can have a significant impact on the quality of their life. And this includes access to appropriate technology and support uh, to treatment and lifestyle management. Access to My Diabetes My Way is an award-winning resource that enables people to see and check their clinical results and health information. It provides a wide range of advice and is demonstrating its value in helping people who use it to improve their blood glucose control. And we recently allocated additional funding to support not only the increase in the provision of insulin pumps for adults, but importantly, uh, as Colin Smith mentioned, continuous glucose monitoring for those with the greatest clinical need and who will benefit more from this important technology. Uh, a newly uh, formed expert group is leading work on the prevention framework, which focuses on uh, supporting NHS boards and helping uh, people to reduce the risk of complications and identifying people at high risk of ty type 2 diabetes and taking action to reduce the risk of developing the condition, including lifestyle changes. It's recognised that many of the long-term conditions, including type 2 diabetes, are related to lifestyle factors such as obesity, lack of exercise, smoking, excessive alcohol intake and poor diet, and of course the health inequalities I mentioned, uh, I mentioned uh, earlier. In our programme for government, we've already set out that we'll consult this year on a range of actions to deliver a new approach to diet and healthy weight management. In closing, uh, there are no simple solutions for addressing diabetes, but uh, governments, patients and indeed wider society all have a role to play as indeed do members of this parliament. And I think together we uh, can build on the real tangible progress already made uh, towards preventing the complication of all types of diabetes and improving the quality of life for the tens of thousands of people living with this condition in Scotland. That concludes the debate and this meeting is suspended until half past two.